there's method in the madness. So in order to fix the front of the boat, I need the plasma cutter. In order to fix the engine beds, this is what I've been trying to do for a long time now, I need the plasma cutter. In order to go to sea, I need the compressor inside the boat. However, in order to do that, I couldn't mount the original compressor that I had because it just wasn't physically big enough to run the air start. So, that's why I'm kind of relentlessly pushing forward to try and get the air compressor finished so that I can finish the engine beds, so that I can finish the bow welding. Bloody hell, it's windy. Um, yeah, so if it doesn't make sense while we're doing it, just trust that there's a very good reason if I didn't have to be doing this, I wouldn't be. Last week you saw me put together half of our compressor system for Brewpeg. This week we stuck the other half in. With little money, lots of support, Kiwi ingenuity and good old blood, sweat and tears, we're creating a community expedition and research boat built and run by volunteers from around the world because life is too short not to fight for your dream. I took a stroll downtown this evening When I heard music echo through the night the same old songs that I heard the night before So I started running so I wouldn't be too late I didn't think that I would ever see your face again But I was wrong, yeah I was wrong First of all it's pretty simple, we need to cut this top section here off Take the valve out of the top there get rid of the um, ring that sort of goes around the bottom of these tanks and then get this thing cleaned up and into the engine room. With Carl the diesel engineer who's working on our motor uh, down with an injury we've got a couple of weeks up our sleeve and in a very rare occurrence Dan can actually create a system just how he wants to create it. Uh, with your input and your advice it's, uh, it's going to be just amazing. Thanks everyone. Sometimes these valves can be a real trick to get them off, but um, luckily I found a spanner that fits. Crikey, that's quite tight. Because this tank has basically had propane or LPG inside of it, um, it's pretty explosive. So you have to make sure that you prep it carefully before you do any welding and so on. The simplest way of doing that is washing it out. So if the valve has been left open for a while, most of it's going to evaporate out, but there's always going to be residue and that's what you need to deal with. Basically fill this up with water, let it drain, then fill it up again, let it drain again. And I've never had one of these even remotely give me any trouble. Right, well it's plain to see that that tank it's not going to fit in that space that I have available because someone put a compressor in the way. It's incredibly tight. I managed to get that second tank in without having to move that generator. So obviously, 
I'm going to move that generator. You see the tank on the left has about an inch roughly of clearance and this one here has about three nanometers and then down the bottom it's even worse. The second tank is touching the mount for the first tank so can't have that, need to get that nice and clear. So what I'm thinking of doing is unbolting the mounts on this uh, orange frame that holds this generator in and trying to shuffle the whole thing over. how I built the engine mounts. Right, well that's out of the road for, for now. I want to make sure that I don't have the steel tank sitting up against the hull. So a bit of timber, in this case 19 millimeters thick, that's how much clearance I'm going to build into the system. Brackets. my four cardboard templates I just need to convert them into steel Converted to metal, ready to weld. We've had a few people quite nervous about this build. Uh, Dame's not qualified to do compression tanks, so forth. Uh, we can't find anyone that's affordable to do it. It's an enormous amount of money for a system like this. Uh, no one locally will do it. So we have to find a way. We're going to be very careful. It won't be signed off until it's done properly and it's very safe. And also on Brewpeg, we have to be self-sufficient. If we're in the middle of the ocean and something needs a rebuild or something needs building, we've got to be able to do it on board. It's just part of being self-sufficient on Blue That's on an angle, so I'm not 100% confident that that's going to work. I'll just take that bolt out. We'll do that. Okay, it worked. Oh, you 
hits it. The cup disintegrated. It's been quite warm in here today. It's cooled down to a balmy high 40s inside the engine room. So it's, you know, it's quite refreshing now. It was a bit hot earlier. Now you may notice that I have welded three of four of these uh, brackets onto here. And it's not because I tacked one and it wasn't tacked well enough and it fell off. Not at all. Let's go with that. Now that I've got the second tank mounted, I need to go through and basically duplicate the fittings that I have on the first tank. So the big flange outlet that comes out of the second tank um, that has to link up with that big one and a quarter inch manifold, the um, three quarter inch uh, inlet, so that goes from the compressor head up to the little sort of um, divider bar and then into each tank, I have to make the fittings on that and I have to put the barrel unions onto that which allow me to take that manifold on and off much easier. And I also need to um, put some fittings together and basically put a drain in the bottom. So um, relatively easy from this point, given that I don't have to guess anything. I know what I'm doing because I've already done it. I'm just duplicating what I did on that first tank. So I've welded this guy together, um, just a single bead all the way around on this side. I'm really happy with the welds. I can see it from this side that it's a nice, decent weld. I do have a slight protrusion on this pipe, as I showed last week. That's how I sort of align these two flanges. This is the other side of that flange bolts up like that and actually that way around and heads off to the manifold that's going to be linking these two together. All right, manifold back on. So these bolts are nice and tight. This is where it's going to be sitting permanently. I've got the little bracket up the top here that holds this end of the manifold pipe. Um, I need to figure out where this flange is going to sit in the tank. So essentially what I need to do is hold that where it's going to be and then try and find my center. Um, I'm not going to cut a hole that's absolutely bang on for this diameter. I'm going to give myself a couple of millimeters of wiggle room because I'm going to get this wrong. I'm not going to be able to line this up perfect. So if I can then basically cut this with a wee bit of clearance feed it into the tank and bolt it up nice and tight to this flange here, then I can mount it exactly where it needs to be for the manifold and then tug it into the tank itself. The tank's not gonna move, the tank is basically bolted solid, it's, it's not going anywhere, um, but I have to allow for it with this manifold. But thank you to Andrew Gray. So he pointed out, there was, a, there was a couple of people in the comments that said that I had the sensing of the pressure wrong. Um, and I thought I had it right, I had it wrong. Andrew took the time and explained why um, and it made, made a lot more sense. And I did have it wrong. I, the way that I had it, it potentially could have been dangerous. And to everybody that I that told me that and I said, no, it can't be, it's the other way around because it's sensing, I, I was wrong. I get it now, I didn't understand it at the time, but I completely get it now. So Andrew has worked through a bit of a design and actually figured out why regulators work the way that they do so that he can then help me retrofit what I need to do on this. I'm changing the manifold and everything up here. So I'm gonna be moving and altering and doing a few modifications to this so that the sensing and the pressure is not coming via this pipe because as people pointed out, I can turn these valves off and theoretically separate it from the tanks. I'm actually gonna be sensing from um, the uh, compressor head. So a wee bit of a muck around, but um, yeah, I'll show you those modifications when I get to actually doing them. But it's because of Andrew that I was able to understand what I did wrong, so I can correct it. So thank you so much, and thanks to everybody that commented on the last episode.
I'm going to try and mount these pressure gauges. So I'm thinking just sort of smack into the front of the tank like that. So when you're just staring at the tank, you can see what each tank's doing in terms of pressure. It's essentially a, there we go, it's a T-fitting. I guess it's a T-fitting with a um, just a threaded pipe that, that gets welded into the tank. Um, this is the blow off um, pressure release at the bottom and then we've got our 200 psi gauge at the top so let's get these in. Right a lot has happened since the last commercial break. Um, I've been to town, I've got parts, I've changed the design three times. Um, I think I've got a significantly better design now. Let me show you what I've done. Regulated air supply is now directly connected to this tank. This tank will be always on. It's gonna be, I've removed the ball valve. If you have a look down there, you can see I've just got a union. There's no ball valve on that side. So that tank will always have air pressure when the compressor's running. Um, I also realized that I was wrong about the way that the regulator senses things. So I've got the pressure feeding directly into the back of the um, pressure switch. And then this plastic line here, this connects to um, a copper line eventually that uh, dissipates the heat that connects to this little fitting just here on the on the valve down there. I am going to probably redesign that. I'm probably going to put it up high as opposed to down low. Um, but yes, I think I'm going to end up with a much better system that way. So essentially there's no way to lock that tank off. It's always going to essentially work just like the original. It's always going to be on. Um, and then I have other tanks such as this guy beside it where I can turn on and off with ball valves. So the big manifold. Um, this is where the starter motor feed goes to, this is where the regulator used to be on. I've drilled a big hole in the bottom of it and I'm going to weld this in here and this is um, half inch nitto fittings for a half inch line for our unregulated feed. Um, if I need to I can also increase these to a bigger size like put one single three quarter or something on there if I really need to if I find that these aren't doing enough. But I will get a gauge on this here that um, is uh, instead, of, instead of having the fitting come out the bottom it'll come out the back and I can put that directly onto the end of that that there so we'll be able to see what's going on when we're starting the engine um, but yes I'm going to weld that in so that we can get rid of the regulator up on the roof and we're going to have it over on the back on those tanks like I showed you. As you can see, this still needs to be welded in, it's still sitting there loose, but we've got the unions tightened up um, and that allows air to flow in um, without any ability to turn this tank off. This tank is always going to be our primary tank, but it also means we can strip this manifold off really easily by just undoing these two unions. Thank you. 
starting to get somewhere. So we've got our stainless feed manifold. That's going up into the tank on the right as the primary tank and then valved off on the left so we can either use that tank or not use it. There's pressure gauges in both tanks as you can see and the regulator on the right hand side. I do need to make a brace on that blue outlet, the four outlet there, because it's absolutely not strong enough. I need to put something in there to take the brunt of the like the pressure when you put um, tools in and out of those fittings. And I've angled them down like that so that the hoses droop as opposed to sort of bend 90 degrees as soon as they come off that manifold. And at the top there you can see we've got the manifold. Um, I don't necessarily need the ball valve on the right hand side but it's there so I'm just leaving it. Uh, and that comes out to um, the inch and a quarter feed that goes off on the right hand side that you can see that it's capped off at the top. That goes off to our starter motor. We've got a quarter inch BSP hole at the end of that feed pipe, which we can either bung off or put a gauge in, whatever we need to. It doesn't matter, the gauge is gonna read the same as what the tanks see. Um, and I've also got the three manifold, that's half inch nitto fittings for our big air tools, such as um, three quarter rattle gun, sandblaster or plasma, something along those lines. What I do need to solve is the union between the stainless solid mounted pipe on the left there for the feed going on across to the rubber mounted base that holds the compressor head. I need a flex pipe in there so that we're not going to have anything crack. And I also need to put some bracing across these um, front two legs here. That's not going to survive long like that. So I need to put a vertical brace underneath everything there. I've had a bit of a think. This manifold that I made earlier, it ain't making the cut. I'm literally going to start chopping it up and modifying it because I've redesigned the intake system so that I can later on fit an after cooler to cool down the charge gear going into the tanks. Um, but for now, I'm not going to have that. I'm just going to put threaded fittings on so it can be added later. What I do need to do is make it so that we can um, measure the pressure properly and put the flex pipe between the compressor head and the new solid mounted compressor inlet. This is why I've been filming pretty much entirely in the engine room today. It's because it's absolutely pissing down and it's supposed to be bucketing for the next week or so. Completely missed the sandblasting window. Dame talked to Tony, who's the sandblaster in the yard. Uh, he had to postpone all his other work. We can still get ours done. It's just going to be early next week. Yeah, that's quite a bit shorter. Right, manifold fitted back on and I've started working on the copper pipe. This is the sensing line that runs from this one-way valve heads all the way up to the regulator itself so the regulator is getting two lots of pressure it's getting before and after that valve so before is uh, the copper pipe after is the tank and that allows essentially I think this is called an unloader valve but it basically allows the compressor itself to be able to start without having full tank pressure in there. I've done another town run and I've got a piece of stainless flex going between this solid mount here and down to the the fitting on the compressor itself. But I need to make this fan at the front end of the compressor safe. I need to put a grate on the guard that I've built so that the air can get through and fingers can't. I don't often build things to a plan. And this isn't probably what most people would think of as a plan, but it is for me. A life-size mock-up in cardboard. And then we have the aluminium version. This is my shield. It's not the prettiest of things. Now I need to make a strip. I'm going to cut this strip out of there using the skill saw and I'm going to do it in the engine room because it's way too wet to try it outside. So this is the guard that I'm making. It's basically a piece of flat aluminium. I've folded over a lip on the inside. Not the prettiest but I'm doing it with pliers and some vice grips. Close enough because no one's going to see the inside and I'm going to tap it smooth when I'm finished. Then I've got a nice strip of a roughly three inch thick um, aluminium, same piece of sheet, I've just cut that out and then bent it around so that I've got a nice sort of even curve. Once this is all tied down with pot rivets and things, this is gonna look quite tidy. Um, certainly would have liked to have been able to fold all of this up and radius it and all that sort of stuff, but I just can't do that. I don't have the tools for it. I, I very rarely do anything with sheet metal, so this is gonna do. Now I do need to cut in here um, a fairly large window for air to flow through because this is an essentially this is air cooled the um, uh, The pulley on the big pulley on the compressor has um, Fins on it that direct air through the air cooling for the cylinders So by leaving this solid I'm just going to close all of that cooling off So I need to open that up and I'm going to put some mesh in a circle in this area in here I was left alone for three minutes staring at this thing and I've made some changes I've got rid of the four connector, the regulated air supply, and I've just changed it with a single nitto fitting over there so that it's stronger, I don't have to worry about bracing it and all that sort of carry on. And I've moved it up there. So now I've got, uh, what have we got? Seven unregulated air supplies. So we've got quarter inch and half inch. I can, and the reason why I'm happy to move it up here is because of the type of work that we do on brew peg using air. 
Um, in the eight years of building this boat, I can think of one situation where we had to try and reduce the air pressure and regulate it down. However, we didn't regulate it down at the compressor, we regulated it down at the machine that we were using. It was spray painting and we used the pot to, as the regulator. We had the, the controls on the, reg, on the pot itself. We didn't rely on the compressor doing that. So I think we're almost never going to use the regulated air supply. That's why I thought let's ditch that and have more unregulated outlets um, and they're nice and strong up there. So I think that's a better solution overall. And at the end of the day, it's quarter inch BSP fittings. If we need to change it, we can just change it. It's no big deal. Now that I've eliminated the need to muck around with that uh, pressure regulated manifold, I need to just finish off this guard. I thought that I would smash this compressor build out in one episode and I was significantly wrong on my timeline. Um, I have managed to get the basic fundamental architecture done. So I've got the two tanks in there. I've got everything to a point where it could pretty close to run. I'm not going to run it yet because I need to hydro test these things. I am going to hydro test, not air test. Um, next step is ripping everything out so that Tony can sandblast it and then I can assemble it. I've been like pushing really, really hard trying to make sandblasting windows because we've only had like literally a day once a week where A, Tony is sandblasting and the weather lets up so that we can blast. I missed the last blasting window. I'm hoping to get the one that's coming up in a day or two, but yeah, we'll see how we go. I've still got heaps of work to do to get to that point. I've got to hydro test these things and fix anything that that shows up. But I really want to just say thanks to everybody that stuck it out with us. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do, because I really love getting the comments. I love the feedback. And I love, if I've done something wrong, I love the fact that there's, you know, 50 or 100,000 people that are going to watch this and pick it up. It basically makes the boat better. And it's awesome to have skilled people in the comment section to jump in and, and you know, fill us with the knowledge that they have so that we can make better systems. So thank you to everybody that's commented. Thank you to the subscribers, the supporters, Patreons, everybody that keeps this project running. You guys mean the world to us and we couldn't do it without you.